all the good letters. Oh, you don't know this. Yeah, what's a DO? There's a war going on in the medical community, guys, between MDs and DOs. I don't know, DO. MD, DO. Medical doctor versus doctor of osteopathy. Which is better? Is it potato, potato or tomato, tomato? Well, if you're an aspiring medical student and you're trying to navigate the very confusing choice between pursuing an MD degree or a DO degree, this video is for you. Hi, I'm Dr. Brian. I am an MD and I trained at Michigan and Dartmouth. Recently, my two college age kids completed the arduous process of applying to medical school. And during this process, they had a number of presentations that extolled the virtues of the two alternate pathways to medicine, MD or DO. For the uninitiated, this can be a remarkably confusing process. As a part of this, they both asked me as a practicing and an experienced physician, what did I think? Well, this video is a bit of a deep dive into the realities of that difficult choice MD? DO? Does it matter? Spoiler alert, yes. But perhaps not for all the reasons you might think. So let's first start with the similarities between a DO and an MD degree. That's the time commitment. Both of these degrees require a four-year undergraduate degree on average. And this is really science heavy. Think organic chemistry. And then following that, there's an additional four years of medical school. And to get into that medical school, you have to go through the admissions committee. Evaluate your MCAT, which is the medical college admissions test. They look at your GPA, they look at your volunteer, your service activities, and your experience in the medical profession that demonstrates whether you really understand what you're getting into by pursuing medicine. And both are quite competitive. Now DOs take what's called the COMLEX, and MDs usually take the USMLE, both licensing exams. Both MDs and DOs on average have two years of preclinical work in medical school and then two years of clinical rotations. These are usually through family medicine, surgery, pediatrics, OBGYN, and psychiatry, as well as internal medicine. And since 2020, both MDs and DOs can apply to the same residencies. Residency is an additional three to seven years of additional training. This is what trains physicians to do their specialty. For example, pediatrics is three more years. General surgery is oftentimes five more years. Then after completing the residency and after completing licensing, both DOs and MDs can prescribe medications, perform surgery, and they're usually equally credentialed and licensed federally, state, and local hospitals and medical boards. And if you see them as a patient in the hospital or see them in a clinic, you probably can't tell the difference between a DO and an MD unless you looked at the initials at the end of their name. Now, how about cost? Well, that's a big discussion in itself, but suffice it to say that both types of medical schools are really, really expensive. Now, there's a handful of schools that if you're a state resident and you get in-state resident tuition like University of New Mexico and Albuquerque or in Nebraska or some Texas schools, the cost is actually relatively reasonable in the 30,000 a year or less, but a enormous majority of people have to go out of state or go to private schools. These are very high for both DO and MD schools. And you kind of have to look at the individual schools. They range from 55,000 per year for tuition up to over $100,000 tuition per year for Stanford. So that's where the similarities end. A common question between a DO and MD degree is, is getting a DO easier than an MD? Is it easier to get an MD or a DO? But the answer has some nuances. Technically, it's harder to get into a DO program because there is a lower overall acceptance rate. Now, this might come kind of as a shock to you, but the primary reason behind this fact is that there are far fewer accredited DO programs, 37 to 40, than accredited MD programs, 158 in the United States. In other words, because more MD programs exist, you are statistically more likely to get into an MD program versus getting into a DO program. Practically speaking, however, it's actually much more difficult to get into an MD program. Why is this? Well, a huge component of the admission committee criteria is the MCAT exam and the GPA. For the 2023-2024 academic year, the average MCAT score was 512. This is 83 percentile for MD students, and the average GPA was 3.8. This compares to DO programs. The average MCAT score for DO programs during the same time period was 505. This is only 59 percentile. 59 percentile versus 83 percentile. And average DO GPA was 3.6. So now once you get into the medical school, either DO or MD, the school itself is actually quite similar, the academic component. But there is one exception. DOs complete a very similar academic program as MDs, but they have an additional 200 to 800 
100 hours of what's known as osteopathic manipulative therapy, OMT. Now, OMT is required as a part of the DO curriculum, and this includes a number of hands-on techniques that really have very little evidence-based or literature support for effectiveness. As an example, there's something known as cranial osteopathy or cranial sacral therapy. This proposes to use gentle touch on the skull bones and adjusting the immovable skull joints for a therapeutic benefit and changing the CSF or the spinal fluid. And it in particular has been advocated for both cancer and especially in kids. Well, it's absolute quackery. Now, in fairness, there are additional OMT techniques that are much more akin to kind of massage and physical therapy maneuvers. But a recent review in the literature shows that 78% of DOs perform OMT in less than 5% of their patients. And close to 60% of DOs do zero OMT in their practice. And there's a very good 2022 meta-analysis looking at pediatric OMT, looking at nine years of data that found it really isn't effective and has no proven benefit. So the take home message is really, if you're trying to decide between MD and DO school and philosophically you really like the idea of OMT, I would suggest that really shouldn't sway you very strongly. It has little literature support and out in practice, even if you choose primary care, it's rarely used. And if you go into a non-primary care specialty like interventional radiology, dermatology, emergency room, or any of the general surgery or surgical subspecialties, you will never use. It. So what are some of the other important differences that I think are important when you're trying to decide MD versus DO? Well, the number one piece of advice that I gave my two college students and that I give to all current and prospective med students is you want to maximize your future options. You want to maximize your possible opportunities and maintain maximum flexibility for your future choices in medicine. What do I mean by that? Well, medicine is not a trivial pursuit. The idea that you would invest on average eight years, four years of a grueling undergraduate curriculum, followed by four years of a challenging medical school curriculum. And then when you graduate, can you imagine if you're unable to choose what specialty you'd like to practice in, or you're unable to choose where you'd like to practice, either in this country or another one, or whether you want to do private practice or academic research practice. That is a true tragedy. So let's walk through some of my real concerns regarding the DO degree. Number one, international licensing. So I've been in practice for 25 plus years and the attitude and the approach by many physicians now is markedly different than when it was 30 years ago. There is an incredible tendency toward the gig economy, travelers, and in physicians, locum tenens. Locum tenens are physicians that are paid a premium for temporary assignments in locations where demand for physicians are very high. Well, MD physicians have relatively full practice rights worldwide. The O physicians do not. They have full rights in some countries, but significantly fewer countries than MDs and only partial practice rights in many other countries. So if your goal is to practice internationally, then MD is a clear, better choice. You get a DO degree that can significantly limit your options. Next, and probably to me, the most important characteristic when you're looking at DO versus MD is the ability to match it into competitive specialties. Now, 60% of DOs go into primary care. Think pediatrics, family medicine. And so a common refrain from DO students is, oh, it doesn't matter. I'm going to do primary care. DO is a really good school for me. The problem with this is that there are multiple studies that show that 70% of medical students change what they want to do once they get in and experience medical school. It's just like undergraduates. I'm a primary example. I started out in pediatrics. Then I was going to do pediatric surgery. And then I did neither one. So if you have chosen a DO school, and you want to pursue competitive specialties, that can become an insurmountable challenge. For example, neurosurgery, very difficult. Plastic surgery, almost impossible. If you look at the 2023 National Residency Match Program results, and you look at who matched into their preferred specialty, MD seniors matched into thoracic surgery residencies at a rate of 84%, while DO seniors matched at a 2% rate. In neurosurgery, it's even worse. The difference is greater. MD 
seniors, 87%. In DO seniors, 1.2%. Can you imagine going through the whole process and you have a one out of 100 chance to practice the medical specialty that you fell in love with? In addition, if you're a DO and you do match into a primary care specialty that you chose, that doesn't mean that you're going to get into a competitive program for that primary care program. For example, the University of North Carolina in Chapel Hill, they're ranked number three in the US News and World Report for primary care. They have exactly zero DOs in their 2024 graduating family medicine cohort. So just because you can get into a primary care specialty doesn't mean that you're going to go to your choice of a program that you would like to train in. Now, at least a component of this is because DO programs have very limited associations with university-based programs and very limited research. Research is becoming ever more important to the discern between applicants as both the COMLAX and USMLE licensing exams have gone to pass fail in the first component. Sometimes letters of recommendation for research mentors are all that separate you and allow you to get into a competitive program. So as it stands today, there are multiple more opportunities available to MD students than there are for DO students. And I would really recommend that you have to consider the potential long-term consequences of choosing a DO school now because it's easier to get into and weigh it against the limitations of your long-term consequences, in particular, limiting your specialty choice later down the road. For this reason, I would argue that for most students, they'll be far better off choosing an MD program rather than a DO program if they do have that option. Thanks for watching. Please don't forget to hit subscribe.